And there we go, the clock is on, zero, zero, mm. zero, zero. Welcome to St Andrews on this uh, lovely sunny morning, although I wonder if, children, you are hoping the sun will change to snow. Perhaps the adults aren't, perhaps you yes, children are. Not and just Serena children. Serena here is hoping <laughs> that too, so uh, we shall see if the snow reaches us. Welcome uh, to this online service. And uh, welcome if you're on Zoom, welcome if you are on YouTube or Facebook Live, however you are this morning, you are very welcome. I can welcome you into God's presence, because that's what God wants to be among us this morning, so welcome to you. And uh, what else do I want to say? Uh, my mind has gone blank for the moment, but that's, uh, <laughs> that's obviously interesting. What, oh, what I wanted to say was, yeah, this is our all-age service, this is a bit different this morning. So children and young people, um, you are welcome to stay, to stay with us during the service, and there will be young people taking part. We have our big Bible story video, so do stay and watch that. So you are very welcome to stay with us and enjoy this service, all of us together this morning. We're going to move to some notices and Serena's going to do the first one for us this morning. Fantastic. Thank you, Sue. Morning, everybody. It's great to be with you at our All Age service and whatever stage of faith or life you are in, you are welcome. It's great to welcome you. We have some notices. Hopefully you can see them on your screens. And our first one is about our virtual children and youth work at the moment. Obviously, things are very different in this season, but we have adapted and we're offering a range of things for children and young people. As you can see, our preschool and infant school children are being covered by some videos uh, that are created by a team of us with craft, singing and a story and a great fun each week. And everybody can join in with those, young at heart as well. And then we have our junior school Zoom, which is called Zoom 66. Mm -hmm. And we are delighted that uh, a number of children go along to that each week to find out more about Jesus. And at the moment, we're exploring the miracles. So today, you have a bit of a head start, Zoom 66ers, <laughs> as I speak a little bit more about miracles later on. And we also have our secondary school Zoom, which is called Pathfinders. And at the moment, we are exploring the Gospel of John. And then last but definitely not least, in the evening on Sundays at 6.45, a group called Uncover for years 9 to 13, where we wrestle, so we wrestle right. with life's big issues. So that's our virtual children's and youth work at the moment. So our next notice will come up. I hope you can, uh, this is helpful as we speak then, there's some text too. So this is advanced notice of uh, Lent and what we're doing. We're going to do the prayer course on Wednesday evenings, part of Home Group Central. But, but, if you haven't been attending that or you feel you've never been in a home group, that doesn't matter, you can join us for Lent. So look out for more details. That'll start mm. after Ash Wednesday, uh, the Lent course. Mm. Fantastic. If we can move on to our next slide, uh, we have our free delivered meals, which we are delighted are still going really well. And it was great to hear an update from the team, I think just last week, mm. wasn't it? Yeah. And hearing that regularly, they are serving 50 people in our community a soup each day, which is just wonderful. So continue to pray for that, please. And also, if you know anybody in need, uh, the number that is on that slide and you can find on Facebook and probably on our website can be passed on. So let's continue to pray for that wonderful, wonderful scheme. And our next slide, uh, phone prayer ministry. Obviously, we're not gathering in church. Prayer ministry, a special part of our worship. But if you would like someone to pray with you about anything, about anything at all, and you can phone the office and a member of the prayer ministry team will be in touch. So I commend that to you. And also on Wednesday, we are delighted to have two groups that meet to pray. We've said a bit about how our evenings are going to be transitioning into the Lent course, um, but we have been doing a home group central at 8 p.m., which has been wonderful, and a chance for people to come and be together in a way that home groups aren't normally. So that's been really precious. And then our regular meeting, which will carry on as normal, is parish prayers between 10.30 and 11 a.m. And a real chance to come and focus on the needs of our community, our world, and people that are close to our hearts. 
the marriage course. The marriage course, you can join this whenever you like. Uh, it says it's uh, seven online sessions. That's still available. Uh, so have a think and a pray. And if that's for you, then do contact the church office. I think this is the last one. Am I right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ed's giving me the thumbs up. Uh, there's a public consultation going on. The Diocese of Winchester has been doing a bit of reorganizing. And if you'd like to know more about that, you can check out the web link, which is on that slide. So maybe if Ed leaves it up for a couple of seconds, you can jot that down if you're particularly interested. At the moment, we don't think that's going to affect us a huge amount but it'd be really good to know what's happening in our diocese, wouldn't it? So if you'd like to, head over to that website and you can see what's going on. So there we go. Here endeth the notices, yes. as they say. <laughs> uh, good to be together. Good to be able to sing. Serena and I have to stop ourselves singing here. But uh, we're going to be led in this lovely song, Shine from the Inside Out, as God's people. Can we shine with God's love? from the inside out. Over to the Hannam family, thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Hannams. Hopefully you had a very good boogie there. I had a fantastic boogie up here uh, on the platform. We're going to do an introduction activity now. Uh, and this is a wonderful activity that helps us to think about what is in front of us. I wonder if you've ever heard the saying that you can't see the wood for the trees or perhaps you can't see what's right in front of you. Well, this game is all about looking at some images up close, and they've been distorted. So perhaps the images that we're very uh, used to normally are a little bit harder to see what they are. So if I can ask for our lovely team to put up our PowerPoint, what you need to do is write in the chat what you think these distorted images are. And then we're going to see what the images are and who got it right. So first of all, let's have a look. They're flying in. Well done, everybody. We've got a paper clip. We've got a paper clip says Eva. Most people are going for a paper clip. Fantastic. OK, can we see Toller family is saying paper clip? You were right. Give yourself a round of applause. It was indeed a paper clip. OK, number two. What have we got? Now, this is quite odd. I had a look at this earlier in the week, and I have to say, I had no idea. So type your guesses. What do you think 
it is. Okay, we've got the something of a button. I can't read that properly. A back of a button. We've got a coloring pencil. We've got a cork pencil. Um, I really need some glasses. A bolt, I think that says. A paper holding clip. A pencil, a cork. Okay, put us out of our misery. What is it? It is a pencil. I think it was, in fact, the end of the pencil, was it, Ed? Ed created this, and he's given me the thumbs up. Okay, well done to those who've got two in a row. I wonder if you have. This is our third one, which, again, I found really hard, but your answers are flying in, so you're obviously much better at this than me. So most people are saying a battery. We do have a Duracell battery, an AA battery. You're very specific. I like it. AA. Okay, Ed, what have we got? It is indeed a Duracell battery. So, Alison, you get top marks for saying Duracell battery. Okay, next one. Ooh, what do we think this is? What do we think? Oh, we've got some answers coming in from the Armitages. They're saying conquer. Uh, Peter Toller is saying toast. <laughs> Maybe he's hungry. Uh, we've got conquer. We've got cappuccino. We've got more toast. Any other uh, answers from you before we get the big reveal? Okay, can we see what it actually is? It's a conquer. Well done to those who said conquer. And Peter, go and eat some toast if you are that hungry. Okay, next, what do we think this is? To me, it looked um, like something and it wasn't. And maybe some of you will fall into the same trap. What do we think? Okay, we've got tennis ball. We've got a scourer. That's a good answer, actually, a scourer. Any other answers? Lots of tennis balls flying about. Okay, we've got grass, which is what I thought it was. Eva and family, that is what I thought it was too. Okay, my hair in the morning, <laughs> says Susie Pavitt. <laughs> I love that. And a Wilson specifically, says Philip Ladbury. Is that a type of tennis ball? It is. Okay, wonderful. Shall we have a look? Let's see. Wonderful. Well done to you who said tennis ball. And is it a Wilson, Ed? Uh, Ed's giving me the thumbs down, Philip. I'm very sorry. What kind was it? A doné. Oh, I thought that was a kebab. But no, that's a, <laughs> that's a tennis ball. <laughs> okay, let's have a look. Have we got any more, Ed? Oh, I think this might be the last one. What do you think this is? We have a paintbrush from the Armitages. We have a brush from Susie, a makeup brush from the Toller family, a shaving brush from Graham Brown. Peter Toller says makeup brush. <laughs> he would know all about that, I'm sure. Um, Alison says makeup brush. We've got paintbrush. So we think it's a brush of some sort. Shall we see what brush it is? It's a paintbrush. So well done to those who said paintbrush. Wonderful. I think that's it, hey? Wonderful. So Ed put that together. Thank you to Ed. And the reason behind that was thinking about when something is right in front of us, but perhaps we're not seeing it clearly for lots of different reasons. And we're going to think a little bit about that later on as I do my talk. But now I'm really excited to watch with you our big Bible story. And this week, uh, delighted to have a few new faces in our big Bible story and a face that lots of you will know as well. Um, and he's not around very often anymore, so it'd be lovely to see him. Don't want to give away the surprise. But our new faces are from the new families that have joined us during lockdown. So I wonder whether you can uh, spot them on the screen. But let's watch it together and find out more about our story for today. <laughs> and welcome to our big bible story today this story is from a book in the bible called john and the story is called jesus heals an officer's son jesus 
travelled to a place called Galilee. When he got there, people welcomed him. Welcome, Jesus. Wow, he's here. They had seen all of the amazing things Jesus had done at a special celebration called the Passover. In the city of Capernaum, Jesus met an officer. His son was sick. The man, hearing Jesus was in town, went and begged him to come and heal his son. Please come and heal my son. You people must see signs and miracles before you believe in me. Sir, come before my child dies. Go, your son will live. The man believed what Jesus told him and went home. On the way, the man's servants came and met him. Your son is well. What time did my son begin to get well? It was about one o'clock when the fever left him. The father knew that one o'clock was the exact time that Jesus had said, your son will live. So the man and all the people of his house believed in Jesus. The end. Thank you to everybody who put that together. I'm sure, like me, you've missed those big Bible stories that bring the Bible alive. We're going to hear that story read from God's Word a bit later. Keep those images in your mind. But first, we're going to sing together. Well, you can all sing at home and join in because it says, we want to see Jesus lifted high. Let's hear from Phil and Alison.
rather lovely here. We could see Zoom and we could see lots of people uh, joining in the actions and Serena definitely was here, so that was lovely. We're going to hear that story that we've seen in our big Bible story. We're going to hear it read from the Bible now, so listen out for the bits that you remember. Over to Sandy. Thank you, Sandy. Today's Bible reading is from John's Gospel, chapter 4, starting at verse 43. After two days, he left for Galilee. Now Jesus himself had pointed out that a prophet has no honor in his own country. When he arrived in Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him. They had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the Passover festival, for they also had been there. Once more, he visited Cana in Galilee where he had turned the water into wine. And there was a certain royal official whose son lay ill in Capernaum. When this man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son who was close to death. Unless you people see signs and wonders, Jesus told him, you will never believe. The royal official said, sir, come down before my child dies. Go, Jesus replied, your son will live. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. While he was still on the way, his servants met him with the news that his boy was living. When he inquired as to the time when his son got better, they said to him, yesterday at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. Then the father realized that this was the exact time in which Jesus had said to him, your son will live. So he and his whole household believed. This was the second sign Jesus performed after coming from Judea to Galilee. And this is the word of the Lord. Shall we pray quickly before I share my talk this morning and let's ask God to speak to us through the Holy Spirit. God, we thank you for your word, which is alive and active and sharper than any double-edged sword. And we ask that you would reveal it to us through the Holy Spirit this morning. Amen. Amen. I wonder if you've ever had that moment where it's a hot, sunny day. And while you're on holiday, maybe somewhere like Cornwall, you get an urge to go swimming or surfing in the sea. At first, you have a wonderful time. Things are glorious. The, the sea is cooling and refreshing. And there are big waves that you can catch maybe on your surfboard. But then suddenly, the tide turns. And before you realize it, you're being dragged out to sea and your life is in terrible danger. As the waves get bigger and bigger and you are moving further and further from the shore, you know that you need saving and you need saving quickly. And I want to ask you a question now. As time is short, which of these two boats would you be most relieved to see? Would it be A? Have a look at boat A. Would you be most relieved to see this boat? You can see it's a lifeboat, an R-N-L-I lifeboat. Or would you be most relieved to see this boat that is coming up? As you can see, it's a pedalo. I wonder which one you'd be most relieved to see. Perhaps you can type into the comments on Zoom, A or B, the lifeboat or the pedalo? Well, me personally, I would be most relieved, I think, to see boat 
A, the lifeboat. Why? Well, probably because it's got the sign R-N-L-I on the side. You can tell that these people are trained for saving people at sea. The R-N-L-I sign would be a very welcome sign, wouldn't it? Now imagine for a moment that while you're out shopping one day with your friend, they suddenly collapse on the street. You're in shock and you think something terrible is about to happen to your friend. Why have they collapsed? What's going on? Perhaps even you think their life is in danger. There are two sounds that I want you to listen to and that you, again, can say A or B, which sound you'd be most relieved to hear in this circumstance. So would it be A? Wonderful. So the sound of an ice cream van. It's a lovely sound for children up and down the country. But would you be relieved to hear that if your friend had collapsed on the floor? Or would it be B? The sound of an ambulance. I wonder which one you'd be most relieved to hear. Personally, even though I love ice cream, I would be most relieved to hear the sound of an ambulance. Why? Well, because I know the siren is a sign that the people coming are trained in rescue and that they will do my best, their best, to save my friend. I wonder which one you would be most relieved to hear. And again, the ambulance siren would be a very welcome sign, wouldn't it? Now, thousands of years ago, God said that he was going to save, to rescue his people. They were waiting for a sign, and that sign would be a very welcome sign when they saw it. He wasn't necessarily coming to save people who are drowning in the sea, though he could do that. And he wasn't necessarily coming to to save those who had collapsed in the street, though he could do that. God's plan was much bigger. God was planning to save all of us from the bad things that we have done that keep us separate from God. We call this sin. It's like a wall that gets built. And God is on the other side, and we're on one side. And God was sending Jesus to make sure that that wall would no longer exist and that God's people could be God's friends again. And the way that God was going to do this, as I said, was sending a special person who would be a sign, someone that would save everybody in the world. But how would people recognize him? He wasn't going to have a big S on his T-shirt like Superman. And he wasn't going to have a special sounding voice. So what signs would there be to show that this person really had been sent by God? He wasn't just an ordinary person. Well, the Bible teaches us about Jesus, who was the special person that God sent And it teaches us about the signs that Jesus did to show people he was the one God was sending. And we call these signs miracles. Zoom 66, you've been learning about miracles, so you are going to be experts in this. So what is a miracle, I hear you ask? It's a weird thing to talk about, isn't it, in our a world where we are dependent on facts and science and logic, do miracles have any part of our life? What do we mean? Well, a miracle is something that only God can do. It's something you look at and you know that nothing natural, nobody, no matter how special they were, could have done it. It had to be God, and it had to be God's power. 
And one of the miracles that Jesus performed while he was alive and on the earth and showing people that he was the one, the special person that God had sent, was he performed miracles of healing. And we read about that, don't we, in this story, and we've heard and seen about that in our story today. And Jesus went around touching people, and he would ask the Holy Spirit to heal them through God's power. And he healed people's bodies when they weren't well, when they were poorly. He, he healed people's minds. Some people had thoughts that made them very scared and lonely, and God healed their minds. And God also healed people's emotions, so the inside of them he could heal too. And the amazing thing is, whenever Jesus did this, through God's power, people saw and they believed. We heard in our story today, didn't we, that the whole household, because of what Jesus had done for the son of the official, believed in the power of God. Jesus wanted people to know the power of God and to believe. We struggle sometimes to read about healing, don't we? Perhaps you've been praying for a long time. Someone hasn't got better. In fact, maybe somebody has died and you thought they were going to get better and they didn't. We live in a time where not everyone is healed and there's no quick answers. Nobody can tell us exactly why not everybody is healed. And this side of heaven, we might never know why that is. But the important thing is, the most important thing is, the healing that everybody can receive, which is the healing of coming to know Jesus and being friends with him. And the Bible uses a long word to describe that called salvation. And really, that healing is never delayed. The Bible tells us, as soon as you ask, you get it. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, says the Bible. So the question this morning is, have you had the greatest healing of all, of salvation? If not, ask him. He will never say no. Jesus, when he was alive, showed that he was most concerned about people coming to friendship with God. That was his main mission. He's more concerned about that than he is performing signs. He says something a little weird <laughs> in the passage that we've seen and heard and read. He says in verse 48, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will never believe. He's frustrated, isn't he? You can, you can read that. People had seen and heard and, and even experienced Jesus do amazing things. He'd walked around and he turned water into wine, as we've spoken about. And he healed people. But yet, people still didn't get it. They didn't get who he was. You could have said they should have gone to Specsavers. Because like the game at the beginning, they had all the evidence in front of them. They had Jesus himself, and yet they still asked for more signs, and they still didn't see properly. Jesus was frustrated because he longed for people to know God and believe that he had sent him. Yet people seemed more interested in the miracles but miracles are always meant to point to God. They are not to be looked at as just a cool thing that happens. They are always meant to point back to God. But amazingly, even though Jesus is frustrated and he knows that people are going to keep asking for more miracles, he does this miracle anyway, doesn't he? He heals the official's son. And I think he does it because he cares 
about people. He cares about you. He cares about me. And he cares about us being whole. Jesus came to make us whole people, our bodies, our minds, and our emotions. So today, the question is, do you believe? Jesus has given you evidence. We've got the Bible. We're so blessed to live in a time when we can read the Bible, which tells us about the life of Jesus. And not only his life, but the prophecies about him coming and what would happen in his life. Perhaps some of you have experienced God's power. You know it to be true because you've met with him through the Holy Spirit. We've got evidence of Jesus. But are we seeing him properly? Or are we seeing through a blurry image like we were in the game at the beginning? The question is today, do you believe? Because that will change the rest of your life. Let's pray together. And perhaps in this time, if, if you are someone who, when I've asked that question, do you believe, thinks, I don't know. I don't know if I believe. I want to. Or perhaps your answer is, yes, I definitely believe. Whatever state you come in today, Jesus longs for you to know the power of God and how much God loves you, that he would send Jesus, even if you were the only person alive, he would send Jesus to die on the cross for you. So let's thank him now and let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for Jesus, the one who came to save and to rescue. He came as a sign of your love for us, God. And this morning, Lord, we pray for those who would, who would say, I don't know if I believe, that you would meet with them right now through the power of the Holy Spirit. Touch their hearts, Lord. Amen. Amen. We are now going to sing together again. Make sure that at home you're singing out nice and loud because we can't do that here, which is really sad. But Heidi's going to lead us in water you turned into wine. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Let's sing together.
Oh God, that's the God that we come before. That's the God that we pray to, the one who is greater. That lovely phrase, there's no one like you. We can be helped, can't we, by doctors and nurses and teachers and emergency services. We could be rescued by that lifeboat. But it's God who rescues us from our sins, from all that's wrong in our lives, from all the things that separate us from himself, our God. So we're going to turn to prayer now and we have a lovely video and we're very thankful to Anna Armitage. Thank you, Anna, who has written these prayers and organised the video so our youngsters can lead us in prayer. And then after that, Ray, Ray Ricciardi, will take us on in our praise too. So let's pray together this morning. At the beginning of 2021, we pray for a year of hope. To be thankful for what we've got. We are grateful for healthcare workers and the NHS for everything they are doing in this difficult time. For all you've done and please make sure um, coronavirus has be gone soon. And we are hopeful for the vaccine that we can find freedom but also patience with what comes next. We are thankful for teachers who are adapting to the new way of learning. We also pray for the employed and the jobless. That people can have courage in the workplace and, and have the motivation to carry. For those who are suffering of loneliness, we pray that they can find joy in knowing Jesus. For those suffering with grief, we pray they find peace. Oh God. We pray that right decisions will be made by leaders in all positions. In this ever-changing world, we also pray to protect God's creation. So we pray for families separated by distance, that one day we can... Make... And remind us of Jesus, so he's first placed in our lives this year. We are in this together. God's got this. Amen. Amen. And now... In our prayers this morning, we will see some slides which um, hopefully will guide us in our prayers. Our response will be, Father, Lord of all creation, in your mercy, hear us. So in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. We thank you, Father, for your light. May this community here shine like a beacon so that our lives individually and as a church community will radiate that light, that people will be guided to our Lord Jesus, the source of that light, and believe and know healing in their lives. Father, Lord of all creation, in your mercy, hear us. You created the universe by your eternal word. We pray for your world that we might share and conserve its resources and live in reverence for your creation. Help us to understand the part that we can play in living in harmony with the environment and with each other. Father, Lord of all creation, in your mercy, hear us. We pray for those in authority that they might make just decisions. We think of decisions being taken with the distribution of vaccine. And we ask that those with responsibility for decision making will work together to ensure that the resources are shared justly. We pray for our Queen. We give thanks for her faith and for her openness as to how much that faith has meant to her throughout her life. Father, Lord of all creation, in your mercy, hear us. We bring before you the isolated and the lonely wherever they are. 
those without the means of staying in regular contact with others, remembering particularly all those affected by COVID-19 and their families. Be with all the volunteers in our church who are taking out meals to people. May they have your discernment to be aware of any specific needs in the people to whom they minister. Father, Lord of all creation, in your mercy, hear us. Now this picture reminds us of some of the people affected by this pandemic. We think of our schools, we think of the teachers, but we don't forget the parents and the carers and the young people who are trying to learn under such different circumstances. We remember our medical staff working under immense pressure. Gracious God, as we remember before you those who are under pressure, may you surround them with your comforting love and support them with your sustaining power. We pray for those who have been bereaved and who are suffering physically from the effects of the coronavirus, that they might know your healing, your complete healing through faith in you in their lives. Father, Lord of all creation, in your mercy, hear us. And so, Father, we bring our thoughts to you, praying for people that we know personally who need our prayers and thinking of the things that we as a church will be doing over the next weeks leading up to Easter. We offer ourselves to you now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you to our youngsters on Zoom 66 and thank you to Ray for leading us in our prayers this morning. One of those pictures that Ray had was of a lighthouse and that really picks up our final song this morning as we think, as we sing of Jesus, my lighthouse shining in the dark. Over to the Needhams. Thank you. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence you won't let go. Questions your truth will hold, your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea, world. you are the peace in my troubled sea. My life has Show. Safety show. 
carries us safe to shore. Uh, thank you again to everyone who has enabled this uh, service to happen this morning. Um, technical teams, singers, musicians, everyone who makes this possible. Thank you, Serena, for bringing God's word uh, to us uh, this morning. And thank you, everyone who's joined us. It wouldn't be the same without you. If we felt we were talking to nobody, well, really, that would not be the same. So thank you, everyone. Uh, we're going to end with some music. Um, it's an instrumental of a song we shall be singing in our worship in a few weeks' time. We're going to slowly, hopefully, over the next weeks, introduce some new songs into our worship. This will be one of them. Get a feel for the tune. You may know it already. It speaks of who Jesus is, the Waymaker. Thank you.
in. Mm. Thank you so much, I think, to Phil who put that together. Thank you. Really wonderful to, to hear that tune, but also see those true words that Jesus is the way maker. He's a miracle worker. And uh, we will proclaim that together as we sing that mm -hmm. song, which is really exciting. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hope you're doing all right. Be good to know if you've had anything exciting uh, in your week that we can uh, celebrate with you. I know for some of us, exciting things aren't really <laughs> happening in our weeks, but we do have one bit of exciting news this morning, um, which is that Andrew Besley is 18 years old today. Some of you won't quite believe that because you've probably known him since he was yay high, but he is 18. Mm, so let's give him a round yeah. of applause for being 18. Happy birthday. Well done. Andrew. Happy birthday. <laughs> um, and it would be fantastic to hear from you, Andrew, if you're around or from one of the Besleys, just to tell us what you're going to be up to. We'd love to know how we can be celebrating you and how you're going to be celebrating yourself. So if one of you is around, perhaps you can just jump on and, and say hello. Um, but if that's too embarrassing, don't hello. worry. Good morning. Ah. <laughs> Wasn't expecting this. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we've had a real celebratory week with mum's 50th on Wednesday so we had lots of zoom calls with family oh wow possibly more zoom calls this afternoon I don't know what the plan is yeah a few surprises later right well, I like the decorations yeah. in the room looks really good <laughs> amazing and it was Jackie's birthday as well I can't believe that mm. happy birthday to both of you and I'm so pleased you feel celebrated, Andrew. Sorry to um, slightly put you on the spot, but we do celebrate you. We're just waiting for Charlie's vaccinating again. So we've got to wait for him to come home. Right. Oh, well, I'm pleased that you'll get to be together and have lots of Zoom yeah, fun with various so people. Yeah, happy birthday. Mm. Really, really good to be able to wish you a happy birthday on the day. Um, Peter Toller says, don't mention the rugby. Uh, well, yep. Ray Ricciardi <laughs> says, have. if I was Scottish, I would be celebrating. Mm. But you're not, are you? So I'm really sorry for the rugby fans out there. We and also for the, for the Saints fans. Am I allowed to say that? We had a bit of a catastrophe, didn't we? But anyway, we won't, no, we won't no, dwell no, on no, that because no, I know no, that no, Ian no. will be crying no, into we his have a, uh, George has been bitten by a dog and his oh. finger healed and he didn't lose his finger. It was saved. There you go. Wow. An illustration for you this morning. And was, he wanted is, us to know. There can you, you go. Can you go up? Is that from Chrissy Preswell? Yeah, I think so. Oh, George. <laughs> oh, bless you. I'm so sorry you got bit, but praise Jesus that your, your finger was healed and saved yes yep. Yep. more of that lord more of that we pray for complete healing for mm. your hand oh gosh that must have been awful bless oh, you well, it's sporty sporty here uh, rugby now we're on uh, the cricket joe root did well i do know he got a double century and an amazing catch i did see that so <laughs> i i do know about that so yeah i think england doing well in the cricket so yeah. we'll have to share that yes, yes right of okay <laughs> Great to hear from you all. Do keep uh, posting if you've got anything Any other exciting. news this morning? Mm. What have you been up to this week, Sue? Anything <laughs> at all? My most exciting thing was I got a surprise package through the door right. uh, from my friend who bought me a painting by Numbers, oh. Koala Bear. Oh. And um, some of you will know I did a, I did a lion um, at the start of lockdown, which I loved. So I'm really looking forward oh, to doing right. my Koala Bear. Very exciting when people send you packages yeah, that you lovely, know you didn't it? expect that what a lovely, lovely surprise mm. any anything happened oh, for you this week oh dear or is it much of a much yeah it's really difficult isn't it so mm. set out the days yeah. and it's okay if it's not exciting mm. you know isn't yes it? i haven't actually been anywhere apart from you know the, the supermarket down the road yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i have to admit this morning because i've not been to church in several well months now probably I felt like putting a party dress on. <laughs> I was so excited to be going out. I was like, wow, I'm leaving the house. It was quite something. Uh, anybody been on any nice walks? Uh, I know that the, the forest is very muddy at the moment, so it's quite hard to walk, but there are still some beautiful spots, aren't there? Eva was locked 
lockdown, a lockdown learner at school doing really well. Oh, fantastic, oh. Eva. Proud of you. Oh, That's it's great. vaccinations, yes. Alison went to Applemore and my Richard's going this afternoon. That's Ooh. the excitement of the week. And we might see Charlie then, right? If he's down there, we may meet up with Charlie at Applemore. So, so there you go. You that can have lovely. church That'd be lovely. at Applemore. Church at Applemore this afternoon. <laughs> yep, yep. Love yep. that. Anything else to share before we go into breakout rooms? We'll give you a few moments to type. Vaccine's going really yeah. well, says yeah, Chrissy. That's good. That's great. Chrissy, you've been really involved with that. Bless you for your hard work. Anything else? Yesterday we found a rope. Do you know what? My my sight is right. so bad. Pair of, pair of these, pair of these, pair of these. Yesterday found a rope swing on a, on the walk. So uh, the oh. Brannigan family went for a walk and somebody had already ah, made a rope swing, so I presume lovely. they could have a go on it, so that sounds good. And just for, for those of you who don't know who the Brannigan family are, you will have seen them um, in the prayer video and also in the big Bible story, one of them was in there. Oh. And Diana is mum, and you can probably see her on the screen, give her a wave. They've joined recently and they'd love to get to know you better. Um, so if you get to be in a breakout room with them, you, you know a bit more about them. So Alison's suggestion was uh, singing in Applemore Car Park if half the church are there. Yeah, that, that could be good, couldn't it? Yes, yes. that would be wonderful. We keep Ben Pavitt in our prayers. Um, so next chemo on Tuesday. The end is in sight. Hopefully only two weeks until maintenance period. Mm. So we keep Ben. Ben, we keep you in our prayers as, as a church family here. Mm. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, Jackie Besley says, love seeing the Hannams. <laughs> so do I. That video brings me joy. Hannams, if you're watching on YouTube, um, bless you. We, we love you. And we love that video and the joy that it brings us. Really great and to see you. And a big congratulations to Ben Long, given a Divisional Commander Ooh. Award for his work on modern day slavery. Wow. Amazing. Wow. What a sad thing that happens in our society today. Uh, a well done to Ben and getting that recognition. Mm. Well done, Ben. Mm. That is amazing news. Ben Long, what a hero to be working on that. Well done, mate. If you're watching, you're probably not, but if you are, hello. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, very mindful for your family, Susie, says Ray Ricciardi. Yeah, we are all praying as a church family. We are united in our um, prayers for Ben, but also in our, our sense of grieving with you all as a family too. Um, yeah, and rejoicing in those small but really poignant mm. uh, victories that happen throughout mm. the journey each each session of chemo is a small, poignant victory, isn't it? And I think we need to rejoice in that, but also be aware that it's, it's hard. Yeah, hard. Um, Very hard. So, yeah, continuing praying. Okay, I think we are ready to go into breakout rooms, unless anybody else has anything they would really like to share. We don't want to miss anyone's important news. Um, so, yes, we just need to wave goodbye That's to right. our live streams. So we're going to streams. wave goodbye to those who've joined us on our live streams. It's been lovely having you with us. Goodbye. Goodbye, YouTube. Goodbye, Facebook. <laughs> Great to see you. And uh, goodbye to those who are going to leave us now on Zoom as well. But for those who are staying, let's go into our breakout rooms.